So what we're doing is uh, aiming to quantify the movements that as physios have seen for years and strength and conditioning guys have seen for years, put those movements to numbers. So you're able to tell the difference between how one player who might be moving really well, um, you give him that feedback, and someone who's not moving as well to give him some numbers to strive towards improving the core control and the symmetry between the left and the right. Particularly in Kel's situation, um, coming back from a long-term injury is really helpful for us to understand how his body changed post-operation. I think he's the first um, to ever come back to, to elite level sport from this op, so um, for us it was a big help. You did double beats, you're going to pick up your leg, bring it over, touch, come back. Being able to quantify um, what Kel can and can't do in terms of his hip mobility is really, really important. Um, so this allows us to do that and give the athlete a number to work toward as well. Looking at Kel, you can see that he has a little bit more trouble stabilising on his right leg as he's doing the movement. This is pretty common in terms of footballers on their kicking leg, but also with Kel, that was a side of his of his operation. So we're dealing with probably you know a double, just almost twice the amount of asymmetry that we'd usually see. It's such a chaotic game, it's all about change of direction. Change of direction always requires you to lower your centre of mass, so someone who struggles to do that in a controlled environment here in the gym is going to really load up on the field, so we find a lot of uh, groin and hip issues emanate from a, from a lack of ability to, to do that pattern. So this test is um, telling us a little bit more about extension of the hip, and that's important for us, particularly in terms of high intensity sprinting. So as he drops down, if he loses his balance because he's really tight at the front of his hip, um, that means that he's going to have an imbalance that's going to create basically glute inhibition, which is going to mean that his hamstrings work harder than they need to. This is a new one that we've been uh, been working on with these guys for a little bit of time now, and um, basically what it allows us to do is use the ground um, like a force plate. So um, if you think about someone like Kel um, coming back from, from injury or operation, um, it allows us to look at um, the imbalances between left and right in terms of how they're running. Because we can look at these imbalances here in a static environment controlled in the gym, um, but how does that translate to how they move out there? Yeah. Don't think about anything, just run how you normally run. What, what we're going to do is just be looking at the ground action force between left and right. It's sort of groundbreaking technology really for mm. us. I already know there's a level of yeah. which just with the way that our game loads the body. So there's going to be an acceptable level and there's going to be a level that tips you over that mm. point. We're just tracking um, the amount of, basically the amount of time and thought that he spends on the ground left to right, yep. and also the amount of force that's, that, that comes back at him from the ground, so that ground reaction force. Um, but the interesting thing is, like, when someone comes back from injury, we'll spend a lot of time on running technique at a really low intensity. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're trying to do is even the body up at that low intensity, then retrain it as it comes through rehab. So how would you see that then, that run through? Oh, then oh, just, from the, just from the naked eye? Yeah. I thought it looked pretty good, pretty no, strong. It's, no, it's pretty, it's pretty good. The right one is where I had the operation on, so I suppose the left would maybe compensate and try and take a bit more load, but it would be interesting to see what it does. I think you've got uh, more, you're loading more your left leg. So yep. You seem to have spikes in the blue place here. So I'm, so I'm compensating more on my left. Probably, yes. Yeah. Protect the right. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the red spikes here, which are correspond to your right leg, yep. are sort of lower. At the end of the day, like I said, it's all about longevity, but the, the fact of the matter is Kel's out there functioning. Um, it's just a matter of when he reaches a threshold. So we're trying to keep him as far away from that threshold as we can. How will your equipment help predict the future of the young draftees coming through the system? Yeah, so we've had some good chats with AFL Victoria and they're looking at using the system on the up-and-coming players to understand their movement profiles and it may be data that the clubs are able to look at in an objective way to see who's moving nice and cleanly before the draft and, and the players who aren't moving as well. So one, it might be uh, a driver if you've got two players who are really similar that might differentiate between the two. The other would be that uh, the club when they first recruit a player are able to know the, 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 um, the challenges they've got with that player and work on them straight away.